Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. Hey everybody, welcome to another Wicked Horror Show. I'm Kevin, and as always, I'm joined by Tony. What is going on, people? And uh, the 13th Wolfman. What's up, Wolfie? Oh, everybody. And Tony, would you like to introduce our very special guests? Sure. Uh, I've actually been following this particular movie on uh, the internet, in the interwebs and Instagram, Uh, but... This team also did uh, Streets of Vengeance, um, but today we're talking about, I'm sure we'll get into it, but we're talking about Slash Lorette Party, uh, the team of Paul Ragsdale and Angelica de Alba. How are you? What's going on, guys? Thanks for coming on. Good. How are you guys doing? So, pretty hey, good. The, Thanks for having us. Cinco de Mayo, Tony. Yeah, Cinco I, de Mayo, yeah. This is, this is true. I apologize. Oh, yeah. Cinco de Mayo as well. You should apologize. I did. You don't want to talk about that one. That's okay. No, <laughs> is that is that one of the ones that you guys are, is that like the one you're like? Mm, eh, let's forget about that one. Like that's is that one that you're like, not ashamed of, but you wish you well, could have done it, differently. It's our, it's our first first one, so nah, nah, nah. Yeah. It, it's uh, what's well, our first one? You know, it's like unpolished, and uh, you know, um, I'm not ashamed of it at all. But when you when you start with like Compare. slasher party or she's a and just then you go backwards. Yeah, it's probably like whoa. Next like that, that. That's actually what I like. <laughs> I mean, I tell me the other day or, or today that he bought Secret of Miles. So I was like, oh, okay. Hmm. So so yeah, yeah. I mean, but oh yeah, yeah, it's I, cool. I it's cool to see the progression. Like, I like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know? I like to see oh, yeah. like because this like slash rare, like it, it looks really good. Like it does. quality, like the film quality or you know the video quality, whatever. Like obviously. Um, I don't know like how much you guys are involved in the actual filming process. I know you're directing yeah. and writing, but I don't know like as far as cinematography and stuff like that goes. But there's some really like well shot out, uh, thought out uh, yeah. shots, stuff like that. So it looks really good. So yeah, congrats on that. Well, Paul was the director of cinematography in this movie. Oh, thank you. Oh, nice. Thank you. Nice, 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 nice. Yeah, but that one, um, we had cinematographer. Yeah, I I dug this. Um, yeah, this yeah. movie. I was the DP for Cinco de Mayo. Yeah, it seems like there's a bit of a delay. So, yeah, it's it's weird. It Sorry, seems like there's like a, a delay. That's okay. There's, there's yeah. like a. Sorry about that. Uh, that's okay. How dare you? I'm just kidding. You're you're not control of the internet. Um, so that's all right. But um, but yeah. So uh, so you were, uh, I'm sorry, Wolfie. You were saying that you know he oh, is the. Yeah. I I I really dug this movie. They had a. I don't know if they were inspired by or if they'd seen this movie before, but this movie had some elements of. Mother's Day to it. The original 1980 Mother's Day um, put out by Troma. Hmm. You know? And I, I just, when 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 something ha- I don't want to sure, say what it is, sure. but I, I just, I was like, wow. Okay, they dug, they dug deep. <laughs> so was that an influence to you guys? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely Mother's Day. Oh, for sure. For sure. Yeah, we, we did we did watch a lot of uh, 80s slasher movies and I love trauma. So Mother's Day was a big one. Um, Sleepaway Camp, not so much on like the story, but just you know shooting out in the woods was an influence on on us. And and um, oddly enough, Rosemary's Baby that was a big influence oh, nice. on the movie. Nice. I, I I mean, people pull influences from a lot yeah. of different things that you may not even realize but yeah that's they're all, all all of the movies that were you were influenced by for this one were are all great movies so it's uh that's that's cool that you were able to take that and make what you made you know so it's uh it's really cool yeah. so uh tony um so what what caught your eye to to reach out to to these fine people about the movie well like uh like i said on instagram you know every once in a while being a uh 
getting into indie horror for the past couple of years, pretty much what I'll do is I'll just, you know, search Instagram. I'll put in like indie horror as a hashtag or whatever. And some of the pictures caught my eye and I'm like, this kind of has like that, you know, eighties, um, slasher type, uh, feel like the, uh, photography and stuff. And I'm like, I definitely want to check this one out. And I was checking to see if it actually, you know, had a physical release and whatever. And I, now, you know, soon, hopefully it'll get the physical release, but I'm like, you know, I really want to check this one out. And then I know Angel was also who would have come on. He was excited for it once he, you know, saw that you guys were going to come on. He was like, oh, I've been following this as well. And there's just some that, you know, sometimes I'll just see a, an image or like a stock image or something. And I'm like, oh, yeah. I need to, I need to definitely check out that movie. So. Ever since then, I'm like, you know, I can't wait. Nice. And you, you guys um, did a, a Indiegogo campaign and stuff, and how, it seems like that was fairly awesome. successful. Appreciate that. You know, yeah, there was. Um, I mean, some of our some some people that we know are uh, backers on the Indiegogo. So we had uh, Tony Gannat, uh, Mr. Tony of the Dead. Uh, you said Jay Bond from Bloodbath and Beyond. Yeah, and and what was the other one, Wolfie? Ate the Chosen One. Nice. So yeah, I mean that's pretty great, and I know you. Um, you said that you were working on some VHS. Yeah, as a yeah, yeah. We love Eight the Chosen One. Yeah. Sorry, bit of a bit of a delay. Yeah, yeah. We have a uh, VHS tapes. Uh, I just finished. Oh, sorry, guys. Uh, yeah, I, we just finished the the VHS tapes, um, making it for the Indiegogo. The Indiegogo that was our most successful one to date. Uh, we only had two. Um, but we did raise seven thousand dollars for Slash Gillette Party, um, and on Streets of Vengeance, we only raised like two thousand or so. But um, again, like we've said this before, the Indiegogo are like a marketing tool for us to get the to get awareness for, for the movie and stuff, and to share the trailer and share stills and images, and of course for people to pre-order it. Um, but for the Slash Gillette Party, uh, we raised you know our goal was five thousand, but we raised seven thousand. So everything we did, we had more than enough money to pay for everything in the movie because we took the cast up to the cabin for like three days. So we were there. Uh, we had to, you know, provide food and lodging and all that kind of stuff. And so it was, um, it was really cool. Like it was, this is our, like I said, our most successful Indiegogo to date. So I, all any like just went to the wardrobe and the food and the props and the actors and the blood and the effects. So wow. it was. Those are a great experience, and we have I to thank all of our guessed, supporters yeah. and like the guy in the course, you know. Hmm. I wouldn't have guessed seven thousand. I mean, I, I don't oh. know if there's more into it as well, but it, it doesn't. I mean, it looks like like it would be a higher budget than that. It's like a million dollar movie, man. I don't know about a million, but it it, yeah. it looks higher than seven thousand. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, thank you. Definitely appreciate that. Eight <laughs> twenty. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, oh, yeah, definitely. Thank you. And for that, you know, we uh, I have to give that uh credit, yeah, at least 20 thou. I have to give that credit to Angie, she's the producer and she does the wardrobe and art direction, and to uh Dan Zampa, who's our cinematographer. Um, he's just a master, you know, with lighting and, and filming. And um, um, the crew is just me, her, and him, really. So it's just the three of us putting together the movie and directing it, obviously. Um, so right. it was, um, you know, qu quite a chore, but you know, it's like I said, it's like our biggest movie to date. So a lot of people have been giving us great feedback on the, on the look of it. And, you know, we yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so Angie, you're the, you're the person that dealt with the costumes. I have to ask, uh, Brooke's costume at the beginning of the movie, the little, the little Jackie Kennedy per pink dress mm -hmm. with the yes. heart. Did she already have that? Or did you guys come up with that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, actually, I found that outfit. She was the whole costume that I was looking for, mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, and I it was, took a lot of time for that one. Yes, I'd been looking for weeks, weeks and weeks and weeks, trying to find the perfect costume to fit her character. Mm -hmm. She's a very um, controlling and meticulous, detail-oriented mm -hmm. character, mm -hmm. and I wanted that kind of prissiness to show and what she wore and um that her an outfit one that she wears in the movie found the day before we started shooting yeah and all 
all the accessories were mine from my personal closet. So okay. I just slapped on some gloves mm -hmm. and her belt and the purse. Like all those things are mine. But the dress I actually found the day before. And then we just put on some pearls. I think it's the pearls and the gloves in the bag and like the belt that just does it. The boots, the little yeah, the boots. boots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wear the same size shoes. So um, we were able to, I just, all the accessories were just straight from my closet. Mm -hmm. And then the dress we were able to find um, the day before and it was just perfect. The, the size, the color, mm -hmm. the style, the 80s kind of like puppy sleeves. Oh, yeah. So it just worked out. Yeah. Perfectly. That, that's that's actually one thing. One thing I was actually. I think you're the first person to ask me like a costuming question. <laughs> oh, nice. I, I was actually gonna like that. That's one thing. Like there was a few times in the movie. I'm like, is this when does this take place? Like, like there was that one scene like in the office where she's getting a phone. Like the the she's getting a phone call and she's the guy's canceling. He can't go be the stripper. Right. And she's watching a VHS of oh, a yeah. music video, and I'm like, like Vixen. Right, but but still, I, I was like, she's watching VHS <laughs> yeah. on old TV. She dressed like the 80s. I'm like, but she's got gauges in her ears. I'm like, I don't know. When does this take place? Like, and then the, nice, the next scene, I see her with a uh, girl with a cell phone. I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's just that it's just like yeah. you're, you're just kind of mixing everything. So that's that's cool. I mean, it, it left me guessing a little bit for sure. Right. Yeah. 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 It definitely modern, but yeah, with the kind of 80s style. Yeah. Yeah. For yeah. Tony, you got something? You're muted, by the way, Tony. <laughs> it's the now, now, now that I see it, I I was coughing before, so I muted myself and never unmuted it. But yeah, like I like you were saying, it had that. Once I saw the pictures, I'm like, this looks like an '80s slasher that I'd definitely be into. But then, you know, getting into it, it was like you know more updated, and then you were saying cell phones and stuff. What I found interesting is because, you know, I've been to some bachelor parties myself, having the bachelorette and bachelor party at the exact same area at the same time. I'm like, that just is a scene for like something, you know, crazy to go on to begin with. So, yeah. Yeah, this this was a good time. Yeah, I, I, it's, yeah. it's a lot of like, uh, like good. Yeah, humor yeah, I thought that was a great well. setup for, for a slash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for real. But yeah, the, the uh, there's there was some good humor, and the, 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 I think some of the uh, the choices for cast were definitely, cool. you know, the, the right choice because um, they were just overly ridiculous, but they were supposed to be, you know, yeah. Like, yeah, that like that one stripper who comes in. I think he's in the trailer, but the one stripper who comes in, I'm like, yeah, he's he's perfect. Like, <laughs> I, wish, I wish there was more of them, but uh, what he's there, and I was like, yep, well, it's appropriate, it's good. <laughs> and, um, I don't think he was a real cop. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he was either. Yeah. Weird. But um, yeah, I don't know. So, so do, do you want to maybe talk a little <laughs> about the, uh, about the storyline yeah, and I stuff? Love that one. A little, little bit about um, uh, about like how you went about casting. Are these people that you work with regularly, or are they are they just uh, people that you auditioned, or how did that process go? <clears throat> um, so for Slash Lab Party, um, if you watch the uh, Streets of Vengeance, um, Slash Lab Party was originally a fake trailer that we. Um, put in the middle of Streets of Vengeance. And we had shot that like in 2017, I think. And then um, actually people wanted us to make the full feature. So we tried to bring back mostly everybody from, from the trailer. So Molly, Brooke, Shailene, Vanessa, which um, some were friends of ours. A um, few non-actors and a couple were like theater people that we had met in, in the Modesto area. Um, and so we added some guys and, uh, oddly enough, most of the people in the movie are couples. Hmm. Um, yeah. so like if we have a girl, uh, Nina, for example, the redhead and the, she was like the tough one, her boyfriend <clears throat> was just there to kind of just hang out, but we decided to put him in the movie and he's the guy in the hot dog shirt. So he's <laughs> character, um, Robert Holloway, who plays one of the murderers, uh, his girlfriend, Vanessa, she, she was in the original trailer, so they're together. And uh, anyway, so it's a mixture of like friends and uh, an actor that we met when we first did the original trailer. Um, some people we worked with for the first time, uh, like Drew Mar Marvick uh, um, at a convention in, in Arnaria, Sacramento, or Stockton, I believe. And we knew him from Pool Party Massacre, and uh, he reached out to us because he had seen 
And so we met up with him and talked to him. We came in time to do this movie. Angie had the idea of, hey, let's, you know, let's write a role for him and put him in our movie. Uh, so that was a little great first time working with him. Uh, and then Ginger Lynn Allen with her uh, for Streets of Vengeance. And uh, we wanted to work with her again. So we wrote that role for her as well. Uh, most of the roles in the movie, we had people in mind. Some people were, you know, surprised, but uh, most of them we, we had already known. Um, I think only one person came from the audition. I think Andrew, maybe. Oh, Devin and, and Jasmine, they were new. Yeah. yeah. But we were, we've known Andrew for a long time, just hadn't worked together. Right. So, yeah, so a lot of them are act local actors here in, in Modesto, California. Yeah, except nice. for Drew and, and Ginger, of course. Nice. Well, that's awesome. I mean, there, there was some, like I said, there were some characters that I thought were very, very appropriate. Like the, the the actors and actresses that were playing them, I thought were very appropriate. And um, yeah, I mean, especially like you know now knowing that you know you raised seven thousand dollars and whatever. Like I said, I mean, it looks it looks like it's a higher budget than that. Yeah. Um, but even still, it's it's cool that you have these people that you can work with that uh, you know it, it seems like they. They work well with you, so that's that's awesome. And we do see that a lot lately. Like we see a lot of independent oh. filmmakers working with the same like basic like crew of people, and it's it's awesome. Like I don't know, I, I think mean, it's that great. that goes back to that goes back to Carpenter. That goes back to John Ford. That goes, and I mean, there's always been like some kind of director that's had a, like a certain stable of actors that they want to work with all the time. John if they find out that they work with them well, you know. Yeah. You know, but for independent stuff, though, it's good. It's good to see, like, yeah. uh, you know, there's a lot of independent, uh, you know, directors and writers out there that work a lot with the same people because they know they write for those people and, you know, whatever. So it's pretty cool. But um, so I don't know. Uh, let me let me play the trailer. Um, I, I'll uh, I'll do that. And I don't know, because just yeah. because of the lag and everything, I don't know if you guys want to jump out and jump back in while I play the trailer. So that way, maybe maybe the connection will be a little bit better or something. Um, I don't know if you want to give that a shot. Okay. All right, so here is the trailer for yeah. Satchelor Satchelor Slasher Riddler Slasher Party. Here you go, guys. I don't know how to speak. Here you go. This summer, Bree is getting married, but before the big day, she will have to make it through her bachelorette party weekend alive. your bachelorette party, bitch! That's right, babe. Before we get hitched, I thought we'd celebrate our last few days of freedom. Better get all your fun out now. I know I am. We're gonna make sure we take care of her this weekend, right, ladies? Woo! Yes! There we go! Woo! Fuck yeah! Woo! Hey, guys, let's go! What begins as a celebration of her dreams will quickly turn into a nightmare. Bree! Bree, where are you? Where is Bree? Is she still missing? Oh my god, what happened to her? I found her like this. I go through Petra, what are you doing here? I came to see you. Do you know how I got all these little cuts on your arms and your legs? I needed to get closer to nature. Sometimes it bites back. I am so excited for this party. I'm so grateful to have friends like you. <laughs> what do you think is going on with Bree? I suggest that you just go about your business as normal. Don't draw any attention to her unusual behavior. All right, now we can let the games begin. Oh, 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 oh yes! Jason Myers. You're supposed to be a cop, you fucking idiot! Oh, oh. <laughs> Slash. 
bachelorette party. Freeze! I don't think he's a real cop. Scream now or forever rest in peace. There you go. And you're back. Fingers crossed the connection's better. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. But anyways, yeah, so that's it. I mean, it's a, it's a good time uh, for sure. Uh, yeah. So, so when, yeah, when are you guys, uh, what's the plan? Like, I know you have the Indiegogo. You said you were doing the VHS stuff. And um, uh, what, what's the plan as far as the physical release? Like, uh, when can people track this down? Uh, we're planning on, on a late July, I'm sorry, late January, early January. Uh, we're doing it completely uh, independent. Um, so we're having, like, we did the tapes ourselves and the Blu-rays. Um, we're sending them off to the Duplicator sometime this week. And we hope to get back copies. You know, this depends on, I guess, the mail. But we've been telling people end of January, early February, we should send them out. Uh, the Indiegogo perks, and then have the remaining copies for sale, and we'll have them. Uh, we're gonna have our own website, and um, you can go there and order it, and you know, we'll sign it and mail it out. Awesome, that's great. So uh, one of the one of our regular uh, viewers, Sergio, um, he always asks what pe what your favorite horror movie is. So going way back, like what got you guys into horror? What would you call like each individually your favorite horror movie? funny she has a interesting relationship with horror because <laughs> she was not allowed to watch horror movies as a kid or i i was she was shielded away she had responsible parents you know not like <laughs> mine i could watch anything very much um but we, on her movies from the 80s uh lately kind of catch her up to speed yes so it's yeah. been a, a journey i'm trying to catch up a decade's worth of horror films in a short amount of time, I just watched Chucky. Oh, apparently it's not Chucky. Uh, Chucky. It's Child's Play. Child's Play. So I watched <laughs> that for the first time this year. That was crazy. <laughs> I mean, I uh, show her, uh, I think we watched Night of the Creeps, which is yes. a favorite of mine. Um, mm. I'm gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna show her Night of the Demons, but maybe. I've watched um, all the Halloweens now. Uh, well, except for, no, there's a few we need to watch still. Oh. There's a few. The first four, I think. Yeah, first four. Yes. First four. And um, like for me personally, like I love <clears throat> uh, Night of the Demons is one of my favorite horror movies. Um, Return of the Living Dead, <clears throat> I would say. And uh, what else? I've been really on Fright lately. I, I, was, I was trying to show her Fright Night, the, the one from the 80s. Uh, yeah. My long distant cousin, William Ragsdale, is in that, so. I gotta show him some appreciation for that. But I wondered so, about that. With her, the last yeah, I, her up, uh, I gotta show her something on all the Friday the 13th movies and stuff. Nice. Well, it's, uh, I mean, you're in for a treat. I, I mean, it's, it, there's some stuff that, uh, you I, know. I wanna see some, I wanna see some paperwork. That's what my family tells me. We're, we're really distant, <laughs> long distant cousins. So. Nice. I don't know. I've never no, met them, no. so. So have you ever, I mean, just for, for me as a kid, Poltergeist scared the crap out of me. Have you, have you watched Poltergeist yet, Angie? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes, and I'm traumatized. I'm oh, so that's great. scared. I can't even come out in the middle of the night to like get a glass of water because I'm so scared the chairs are going to be like stacked up all day. <laughs> It's, I mean, it, it, it's still, I mean, so in my opinion, it, it holds up. It kid. holds up. So, oh, totally, totally. So, yeah. Uh, Anything ghost related, paranormal, paranormal stuff? Oh, yeah. It's not good. <laughs> yes, for sure. Wolfie, you were saying? I was going to, well, she, she kind of, she kind of answered that. I was going to say, well, what about like Exorcist or the Omen? But she said, you know, Anything left? Yes. I honestly, I mean, Paul has a Tenebrae shirt on, so I'm guessing he's introducing me to a little bit of Italian horror. If not, there is a list I can hand to you. <laughs> you know, the Beyond and Cemetery Man, Della Morte Della Mora. I mean, those are like. <laughs> he's working on it. Yeah. It's Sorry, the, yeah, the, it's, the, a, uh, it's an ongoing process. Uh, we showed her, I showed her Lost Boy. 
the course. Nice. <laughs> yes. The, de the, the delay is definitely, the uh, definitely killing it right now. Because I wasn't allowed to watch scary stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Oh, yeah, sorry. That's okay. So now I'm making horror films. So that's. Well, that, that's, you know, we, we do see that a lot, though. There's, there's a lot of car <laughs> action that, 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 uh, that, you know, we've, you know, we've, we've had on the show that are not horror fans. Um, you know, they're, they're like some legendary characters and some very memorable, scary characters. They're like, I don't even watch horror movies. It's like, that's insane. But, uh, that's impossible. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, more power to them. They scare the crap out of me. And I, you feel like you offend them by telling them that they scare you. But, um, I don't know, that's what they were there to do, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, wh where do you guys, uh, where are you guys going next? Like, what, uh, what's I think it, what's he's your using it to his advantage because he's always picked your brain because he's like, I can't trust. Like... <laughs> Sorry, the uh, yeah, the 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 delay is like it's uh, I don't know, it, it hasn't gotten any better. Um, do you want to try just out of curiosity? Do you want to try like maybe just turning the video off and see if that maybe if there's no video with you guys, maybe it'll. Uh, It'll improve. It's up to you. Yeah, sorry about that, guys. Just hit the camera button at the bottom. Let's stop cam. Are you guys on a okay. phone or are you guys on a computer? Yeah, I'm trying to. Uh, on a phone. Okay. Please hold. Maybe all of them pulse face. <laughs> and there's the kitchen. <laughs> all right. Oh, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, actually, while we're, uh, while, while we're figuring this out, I'm going to play the uh, ad for Deadly Grounds, um, okay. one of our sponsors uh, for the Dorkening Podcast Network. So here's Father Evil talking about some coffee. Here you go. Rise and shine, my sinners. When Father Evil starts his day, he gets a little deadly. Deadly Grounds coffee has the richest, smoothest flavor you'll find anywhere. It's sinfully delicious. Once you go deadly, you never go back. Order yours at getdeadly.com. Coffee's so good, <laughs> it's scary. And we're back. And uh, they're back. Are you guys back just audio only? Yes, no, maybe. Technical issues, everyone. It happens. Yeah. So, uh, Jerk Production says uh, horror is a job for some, but a lifestyle for others. I couldn't agree. You guys hear us? Um, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I mean, it's. I mean, we all enjoy other stuff as well, but it's. Uh, that's that's our go-to for for the most part. Um. I don't know. I'm sure you guys can attest to that. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, as as I've mentioned a billion times, I've been watching horror, you know, since I was five. So I mean, it's and that was still, seventy years ago. So that's exactly right. Seventy seventy years to the day. Yeah. Yes. Happy birthday, you son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> Tony, you're still muted, by the way. You're muted. Yeah. That that button that says mute on it again. Okay. Hey, that know. actually that actually <laughs> wasn't my fault. I don't know what happened that time. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, <laughs> So, Paul and Andrew, are you, are you there? Seems like technical. Yeah, technical. Yeah, we're here. Can you hear us? Okay. All right. There's still there's still a bit of a of a delay, but we can try to we can try to work through it. Um. So the uh um, where where are you guys going next? Like, what okay. is what's next for you guys? Um, as far as you know, you have this one uh, being released uh, soon. And um, do you guys have another project in the works? I know it's tough uh, right now with everything that's going on with the whole pandemic, but do you guys have any projects in the works? Yeah, actually, I'm uh, writing the script. 
because we're, we're wrestling fans. And, nice. Uh, I want to. I'm writing a script called uh, "Wrestle Babes and the Heavy Metal Demon Massacre." Uh, so it's kind of a blend of uh, like Demon Knight and uh, Night of the Creeps, but with like wrestling uh, involved. <laughs> and uh, so I'm working on that script, and um, I'm hoping to um, actually um, write another script, the shortest script. Uh, a, a vampire movie because, uh, like I said, I've been really into uh, Fright Night lately. So I've been mm-hmm. watching that, Fright Night 2, which I just recently watched for the first time, like in 20 years, because it's so hard to find. Um, so, yeah, I'm working on a couple scripts, a couple things, and, uh, you know, just trying to keep busy and, um, you know, just write because I'm, I'm the, the main writer. So I'm just trying to um, be faster, I guess. In the past years, I've taken kind of a long time writing. So I'm just trying to be more productive, I should say. Well, I mean, at, at times too, I mean, it's good to, you want to be fast, but you don't want to be too fast. You want to, you know, you still want to be, you, be something, you know, putting out something that you're, you're proud of for sure. You fast, know? not sloppy. Well, yeah, I guess. <laughs> but um, exactly. yeah, that, that, exactly. yeah that, that, that's cool. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it, obviously you guys, you, you figured out um, the, the right people to work with as far as cinematography and stuff like that. The sound was great. So that's a, uh, that's a that big, awesome. and that, and that, that's, that's one of the things that I think made it feel like a little bit higher of a budget than what it was too, is that, uh, you know, and it's, and it's impressive to hear that there was only three, basically three of you um, on crew. So that's, uh, that's pretty, pretty impressive. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm definitely looking forward yeah. to seeing what else you guys come up with. Yeah. Oh, it, it... oh thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I keep coming up with stupid, uh, crazy ideas, and she helps me actually make it to reality and ground it so it's not completely <laughs> off the wall crazy. Um, yeah, I won't go into that, but <laughs> some of the original ideas I had. But. but, you know, sometimes crazy off the wall is uh, is what you need. Like, you, you want to stand out a little bit at times, too. Um, so, I mean, yeah. don't, don't shy away too much from it. You want to do something, you oh. know, that would be like, holy crap, did you see that? I mean, think about it. Like like a lot of the movies that, that we love, um, the reason we love them is because they take a risk and, they, you know, they're uh, they're just different. So you have to stand yeah. out a little bit. So, but yeah, I mean, this one, I mean, so obviously with the Indiegogo, this one got, yeah. got a lot of eyes on you guys. Um, and, uh, you know, it sounds like it was pretty successful um, just in general. Um, so that that's pretty big, you know. I've I've seen it posted around here and there. People are sharing it, so it's uh, your 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 name is definitely getting out there. Um, that's pretty pretty awesome, and um, that's how Tony found you as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Tony, have anything else? Uh, what? Yeah, yeah. No, we appreciate you know people like you guys like you you know spreading the word. Yeah, that I mean that's what this podcast is. I mean, I started as a viewer of it, and then finding out about all the indie stuff. And it's one of those things where, you know, ever since I've been, you know, trying my best, you know, I post pictures of movies on Instagram and a lot of people are like, you know, thanking me so much. And, you know, the more I look at it, it's because, you know, sometimes it's hard for, you know, you put all the money into, you know, production and everything, the back half of it of, you know, um, promoting it or something like that. That's where, you know, the, you know, all the money goes to actually making the movie as opposed to, you know, promoting it. So having you guys on here, I mean, it's a pleasure for us because, well, I know for me at least, when I'm able to watch a movie I really enjoy and then be able to talk about it after, it's like, you know, stuff that I enjoy myself. Oh, yeah, no, that's true. Yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of indie filmmakers don't budget out promotion you know money for promotion or you know any of that kind of stuff but you know we we do it all ourselves you know um whether we try to send it in for reviews or make clips or many trailers or whatever so it's a lot of hard work but you know that's like i said you know you guys put in a forum and you know asking us questions and you know showing it to to your to your audience too you know really helps us spread the word so totally appreciate it very much uh, one of the cool things I noticed in this movie was you guys kind of had a nod to some of the people that helped work on the film. Um, when you're looking at the shit list of the of the stripper, the the stripper Rama or Graham or whatever the place is, um, some of the people on there were their names were on the crew list. Like the, one of the guys was a boom. Uh, one of the guys was a boom. Uh, 
Holder. Operator. Yeah. Holder. Holder. Operator. Boom operator. I don't know. I guess that's what it's called. Who uh, who was it? Uh, his last name was, was almost looked like the word tomato, like tomato. Well, I think they just bounced out. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, I was uh, when, when they come back, I, I have some questions as well. Um, let me. Sorry about the all the technical issues, everybody. Um, but uh, now, do you know Tony? Do you know um, like do they have a website where people can go check out their stuff now? Uh, at that point in time, let me actually look it up because okay. they did <laughs> send me. Yeah. The uh, I don't want to get it wrong, so let me. Uh, right. Well, they they just came back as well. So it's, I was just asking Tony, um, Paul, and Angie if, yeah, sorry, uh, if you guys have any, it's okay if if uh, if you guys have any uh, place where people can go. I mean, obviously you have like uh, your social media and stuff like that, but you guys you said that you're going to be selling the physical media on like uh, on a website. Is that website active now, or is it something that's going to be launched just for this movie? It's going to be uh, launched uh, once we release this movie. Um, because we never had a website before. It was always, if we had a, we had a distributor, people can go to Amazon and buy the movie. But now we're doing it ourselves, so we are building our own website right now. It'll be aapfilms.com. Uh, of course, I'll you know share the link and everything. Um, but yeah, once we get that up and running, we'll share it. And, uh, people can go there and buy the, buy the movie on Blu-ray or VHS. Nice. Now, one thing, it's kind of a, I guess it's kind of a loaded question, course, but uh, I sometimes I like to, I like to ask, uh, directors, um, if you could change anything about the movie, like if there was anything that you wish you could have gone back and done again, like is there anything you would have you would have done differently? And I know it's it's weird. It's like asking someone to pick like a, a favorite child or you know whatever. But also artists tend to be very critical of themselves. But is is there uh, is there anything that you would have done a little differently? Well, the whole experience was um, is, is really crazy because. Um, we pride ourselves on um, really shooting very efficiently and never having people stand around and wait. Um, Cause a lot of things that I wanted to do, we just couldn't just cause of time constraints and just, you know, things just happening. Um, you just kind of have to think on your feet and just kind of adapt and rewrite things and we can change a few things. Um, as far as like me looking back on what I wish I would have done um, differently, um, Nothing too much because, like I said, it, it, it the, the whole experience, it was very organic and how the movie came out was, you know, because of the constraints and the time constraints. Uh, if anything, I think I would have, there was a, there's a blood cannon that we used in the movie and we used mm -hmm. it on one of the people that, that gets killed. I wish I would have used that blood, blood cannon again because uh, it just sprays blood everywhere. And uh, I guess if I could change something, I would use that blood cannon like all the time because it was just such a, a great effect. Um, now I just, I'm obsessed with the blood cannon. So I just want to have copious amounts of blood spraying everywhere. So I, I guess even, even, that 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 off, uh, even, yeah, like, even, uh, even for see. like someone who just answers a phone and boom, <laughs> yeah, boom, boom, blood cannon. Yeah, exactly. I'd watch yeah. that movie. Coming out of the receiver. Yeah, now using it on our <laughs> Our backyard fence, so. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, the test, See what you can get away with. Uh, that we have that blood cannon. <laughs> crazy. Uh, it's it's yeah. just a, uh, it's just a, yeah, a yeah, chain yeah, link. Yeah, that, that's really one of the only things. I didn't have time to use the blood cannon. He's got the little neighborhood kids involved. Yeah. <laughs> sure, Send yeah. them all home all bloody looking. The parents are oh, freaking out. <laughs> oh. Yeah, the, the, the day we got got back home we were so tired i just left a bunch of my props out in the front porch their heads and arms severed arms and stuff and we had new neighbors move in and they came over and brought us like a, a cake or something and uh, there was like stuff just on the porch and they didn't ask any questions but uh, i was like oh man or if they think we're weird or something but actually the, our next door neighbors know we make movies and they have uh, I think their son or son in law is like a, a big fan of ours, coincidentally. So that's kind of weird. Yeah. That's cool. awesome. Yeah. You, did you thank them for the cake uh, by just shooting them with a blood <laughs> <Yeah>. candy? <laughs> no, I have to, I have to make, make good on that. 
<laughs> He's just outside their front door when they go to I wait. Will, I, will wait. <laughs> wait. I know he comes home from work at this time. I'll be waiting in the park in the in the driveway. Just bring all their cars. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like a silhouette of, uh, of of your neighbor in blood. Um, it's like the old cartoons. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Happy New Year. Yeah, I, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> New York has the ball dropping. Modesto, it's got the blood cannon. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. blood Anything? Cannon. Yeah, well... I was going to ask you guys. I'm, I'm kind of curious, uh, Kevin, Tony. Uh, when it comes to this movie, what were some of your favorite lines in this movie? Favorite lines? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, you just. I mean, obviously, there's the you know, I don't think he's a cop kind of thing. Yeah. And then uh, like the whole scene where with the stick out in the woods, and then she comes home, and you know, I was just yeah. like. Okay. Well, I, just, I don't know how I missed that the first time, but I did. Okay. And, and I was like, I don't know how, I don't know if I got a text or something and I looked down, but I, I missed it the first time. And I saw this time, I'm like, I don't remember this. How do I not remember this? I just watched it yesterday. Like how? Um, I don't know. That's just cell phones ruin everything. But at the end, I think one of my favorite scenes is when, you know, shit's going down and then, you know, the, one of the bad guys changes, yeah. you know, suits and everything, mm -hmm. and then he does his whole like scamiel and stuff. I'm Thirty-nine years old, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But uh, but that part, I'm just like, I didn't see that one coming. That <laughs> that, that was definitely funny. Yeah. Definitely my, my, something my I've favorite. never seen in a in a in a movie before, where it's like, you know, everything's crazy, and then it just stops and yeah. switches, and it's. That was funny. It's like, so what do you think? Right. Yeah, yeah. But, 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 but my favorite line was like right after that, where he's like, I want the little blonde, uh, I want the little one. And the mother's like, she's been a bitch all day. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, well, okay. <laughs> so Sergio. The asking, little blonde one. Yeah. <laughs> Sergio, uh, Sergio is asking Paul if you, uh, you said that you're into wrestling and stuff. Uh, do you watch WWE or do you, are you into the more like uh, independent stuff or what kind of wrestling do you watch? Uh, I definitely watch WWE. Um, I don't know if anyone's noticed, but a lot of the characters' names are uh, wrestler names. So there's Brie, Brie Bella, Dolph, Alexis, uh, Dean, A Dean Ambrose, uh, Seth, Seth, Rollins. Katie, Nia, yeah, Mandy. Oh yeah, Mandy. So a lot of the main characters' names are, are named after wrestlers. Uh, huh. We do watch. I mean, I was a fan of ECW. You know, back in the day. I don't oh, yeah. watch too much um, independent wrestling now. Um, there was an independent wrestling company in the Bay Area that I was uh, looking forward to, but you know things have stopped because of COVID. But yeah, definitely WWE is something that we've uh, we both have a love for when we were kids, and yeah, I still try to watch it now, of course. Nice. Uh, keep up I was uh, I was AEW all about uh, as well. Yeah, I was all about uh, ECW back in the day. I actually went to see it at uh, a like a, a regular like theater venue uh, in my area. And it was a crazy show. Uh, it was crazy enough that someone got stabbed in the audience awesome. during the show. And, um, and that, this was back when Taz actually oh wrestled. I was, and, I was uh, just going to make a joke. It was probably Taz. I was stabbing someone. No, Taz, <laughs> Taz actually was wrestling. And um, who was it? Um, was it, was it Jack? Sandman or Shadow? Sandman. Sandman. Like he, he, he jumped off of the balcony of the, of the venue um, into the ring. Like he went, he climbed up to the balcony and just jumped off and landed wow. on somebody. It was a crazy, oh it was gosh. a crazy time. It was, it was a really good time, but it's, I, I haven't watched it in Sounds years. Right. Yeah, but it, it was, it was pretty cool back then. That sounds day. amazing. Yeah, it was fun. And I amazing. also randomly saw, the, you know, That's like awesome. ICP, I I seen that. Like, ICP had their, the Juggalo Championship mm -hmm. Wrestling. I saw that live as well. And that was, that was something uh, else. Yeah, yeah. It was horrible. Wow. <laughs> It's real bad. That's right. I remember that. I remember that. Looking at all the names of the cast, I didn't put two and two together, but mm -hmm. I can name every single one and be like, okay, now I know who it corresponds to and stuff. That's that's you know now, something you learn. 
yeah, learn something new every day. Were, were the characters like based oh, off yeah, of yeah, yeah. Those people too? Like, was was Dol- yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm, I haven't followed wrestling in a long time. So, was is Dolph is uh, the the wrestler Dolph as much of a prick as this guy? And as much as I wanted to murder him, the whole much. Movie? <laughs> <laughs> That's more uh, the actors. Uh... Uh, personality bleeding in. No, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I mean, Dolph Ziggler, yeah, he, he's a heel, you know, and so Andrew Brown, who plays Dolph, he loved relishing into that heel persona, uh, for sure. Uh, sometimes the wrestler's personality I would use uh, when I was writing, like, um, you know, not that Bret Hart is anything like Bret in, in the movie, mm. but so for some people, like, like Jimmy, like a... Uh, um, uh, Jimmy um, Uso. Uso, I'm sorry, Jimmy Uso, you know, his uh, jovial kind of attitude, I kind of used that for Jimmy's character in a way. So some people kind of correspond and some people don't. Uh, it's more just of a, you know, uh, the essence of the of the wrestler, you know, put into the into the character yeah. a little bit. Oh, well, I saw someone anything... commented that Dean Ambrose is with AEW now. Yeah, I... He... He's my favorite. Yeah, with Sergio, uh-huh. yeah. And, okay. and I was going to say, Sergio, he's you've sold this movie oh, to Sergio my. completely. He's he's all about wrestling, so he, he's he'll be buying it. I'm positive. Um, <laughs> Sergio, yeah. What up, Serge? Um, but uh, yeah, I, but for real, Sergio. like I, I like there, there's that one Man. scene like on the on the uh, on the the deck where where Dolph is just like belittling the uh, the guy working on the window. And I legit was like, this movie would be over if it was me because I would just I would destroy this man. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm like he would be over the edge. I I don't care. Like even if it wasn't me that he was talking to, I would have just been like, what's your problem, dude? And like would have it would have been over. Would have brought out the bad in me. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, no, no, no. Yeah, he played a great a great smug douchebag. Yeah, it's so funny because he's the sweetest person in real life. <laughs> good he's so ask. nice. <laughs> well, you guys, pretty good douchebag. Yeah. What you what you should do is tell them yeah. tell them that you were on a podcast and uh, that one of the hosts wants to murder him. Not really. <laughs> I don't, actually don't do that. Um, just, <laughs> oh, you know, no, no. That'd be the first time you've heard. Of- no, I already no. told him that my uh, sister wants to murder him. <laughs> nice. Yeah, yeah. Angie's sister felt the same way watching nice. the movie. Well, it, it's a little <laughs> pay per view we need to get going on here. You know, tag team match. Um, I don't Dolph know. versus everybody. Yeah, <laughs> battle royal. Uh, Dolph will be over the top oh. rope right away. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyways, <laughs> Poor Dolph. no, I I, Dolph. I get it though, man. You, you you see some characters in movies that are just the biggest pricks, and you just like God. You you hope that. You hope and pray that the person playing them isn't anywhere near as big a prick. But yeah. to tell you the truth, it it I like it more because oh, it, it kind of has you wanting, you know, sometimes you watch a movie and you're just like, okay, that person died, this person died, well, this yeah, whatever. Well, yeah, have some kind you of know, investment in it. With, with, with this, it's like, okay, he's an asshole, but it's like, now I'm rooting for this guy to just meet his demise. It's yeah. like, and then sometimes at the end of the movie, like, you know, if they live, it's like, <laughs> shit. But at least with this one, it's like, okay, now I, you know, I know who I want to live. I know who I want definitely to die. And, you know, it, it, it brings some, you know, semblance to the movie. So, <laughs> yeah, when, when, whenever I watch a new slasher film, I always play who's going to die first. I love that. Mm-hmm. You know? But the, you, you, but the one thing is, is that, like, we, we get to talk to some actors and yeah. actresses that are, sweethearts and it's like they're most famous for being just a prick and it's yeah. like many people i mean i mean i i don't really think that andrew yeah. is is a is a dick the character of of dolph was was an asshole but um you know like we, we had um <laughs> um i'm forgetting her name from vhs the i like you girl from vhs and she creeped the hell out of me in that movie yeah. and she's a sweetheart yeah, fear, man. and she's not a horror fan it's weird like she's like just that she was wearing a Christmas sweater during the interview and everything. It was just like, this is weird. Like she's just a, a nice girl and she creeped the hell out of me, but, um, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I'm sure I would creep her out if I uh, was. <laughs> there. So. Oh, man. Probably. <laughs> no, that's the best. I think for an actor, that's great to hear that, you know, that, that they can uh, elicit that kind of emotion, you know? So I, I well, think he'd be pleased to yeah. hear that. Well, I'll let him know that, yeah. Hey man, these guys want to kill you. <laughs> Let him know he did his job well. Yes. 
I don't, for some reason, they asked you for your home address. Uh, <laughs> podcast, mm. And uh, they wanted to know like how many entrances to the house you have. I don't and know. They're bringing, they're bringing Angie's sister. Yeah. <laughs> She's going to be the getaway driver, they said. Something like that. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> He's yeah, I'm definitely telling him. Tell them right. <laughs> that's that's fine. Yeah, you, you guys got a definite future in making movies, man. I mean, you're talking about doing a heavy metal wrestling thing. You're 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 reaching from you're you're reaching like deep inside. Like a lot of my loves right there. You didn't do the vampire film. I love vampire films. I just ask that you be. A, I I don't mind comedy, but I want a serious vampire film. I haven't seen a really good serious vampire film in a long time. Steak line? That's, that's 10 true, years old. True, that, mm. Definitely true. I don't know if I know steak line. It's a good movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I definitely tell you. It, it, it's, it's hard because, like, for me, like, it, it seems like comedy just kind of naturally occurs. Not that I'm funny or anything, but I find funny uh, situations in, in, a lot of, in a lot of things. And I guess we tend to like movies that are um, fun, you know, as opposed to scary. Um, even though Sasha Rat Party does have a few jump scares, at least for the people that watched it. But most of, most of all, it's fun, you know, at least I feel. And that, that's what I want. I want people to have fun, even though those horrible things happening to characters and, uh, you know, things like that. But still, I, I think it's a fun time. <laughs> but scary can be fun. Yeah, okay. Decapitations, fun. <laughs> yeah. Hooray. It's a party. True. Very true. <laughs> Yeah, it, it, but I, I think for me, like, I was always attracted to, like, the Monster Squad or, like, Lost Boys, where we'd have, like, a gruesome, you know, gruesome um, blood, um, gory scenes, but, you know, it would have, like, a cool soundtrack or it'd be, like, you know, just really cool. So I, I think, yeah, I, maybe I should try my hand to try and make something actually scary. I don't know. Meh, I don't know. know. I mean, <laughs> I, it's maybe, maybe not. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of people out there that try to make it, you know, you, you also, you want to... you. You want to maybe get out of your comfort zone from time to time, but you know if that's what you're good at, then that's what yeah. you're good at. You know, the end. Yeah. Tony, you look like you want to say something. Yeah, I just like to make stuff. You know, I like. Well, I was I was gonna wait for them to answer, but I was gonna say if the wheel's not, you know, or what what's that saying? <laughs> if it's not broke, don't fix it. I, mean, I don't know. I don't know why the the wheel came yeah. from. The wheel's but... square than you need a round one. <laughs> 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 But then, what is it? If, it? if it's not broken, don't fix it. All right. I'm trying to re reinvent the wheel. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Something along those lines. Something like that. Yeah. So we're actually, you know, I, I like I said, unfortunately, we had the, the technical oh, yeah. issue. I'll, I'll be doing some editing and stuff like that uh, for the audio one to kind of take the, uh, the, the the pauses out there. But um, yeah, we're we're just about wrapping up. Um, so. Where Paul and Angie, where where can people go to to follow what's going on with you guys? Like, do you have your social media, like Instagram or anything like that, that where people can go check out your stuff? Yeah, you can look me up on Facebook, sure, Paul Ragsdale, uh, and our Instagram is AP Films, A underscore P underscore Films. Uh, that's where I post a lot of our videos, uh, behind the scenes stuff. Um, and of course, I have you know the slash that party uh, Facebook page, Facebook Facebook.com slash slash that party. Um, and you know you can look up our other films that we have uh, online. We have Cinco de Mayo and Streets of Vengeance. Uh, if you like, you know, eighties uh, female revenge movies uh, with a giallo kind of twist and a slasher slasher uh, angle to it, um, check out Streets of Vengeance for sure. Uh, if you uh, Want to see where we first started? Uh, check out uh, Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> yeah, do it up. And uh, so, so Angie, same deal. Is, is it the same? Like, uh, you you kind of like it's a joint venture there, so it's the same uh, social media for you guys. Yeah. All right. Perfect. Yes, I mean I have my own personal one, but I never refer like uh, film fans there because all they're gonna get is a bunch of girly like Hello Kitty stuff. So. <laughs> No, you so that's movie Wolfie stuff, Wolfie. go to, to A&P Films. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing like Wolfie and uh, Hello Kitty. He's all about it. So uh, <laughs> that works out. He's a big uh, Hello Kitty. <laughs> um, 
So, uh, so speaking of Wolfie, where can people find you? <laughs> awesome. You can find me on YouTube, the 13th Wolfman, Twitter at the 13th Wolfman, Tumblr, 13th Wolfman, The Proud, doing the Wicked Horror Reviews with Kev, doing this show every other week, and always check out my YouTube. I'm throwing something new up all the time. Tony, what about yourself? Uh, you can find me at Tony Has Nine Fingers on YouTube, where I do movie reviews, unboxings, whatever movie related. Um, I'll do something on my YouTube channel. Uh, Tony Has Nine Fingers on Twitter. I think sooner or later I'm just going to deactivate that, but uh, I'll say it now. Uh, Tony's Movies on Instagram, where I show off the movies behind me. And of course, every Tuesday on the Wicked and Horror Show. Kevin. Uh, a Knuckle on Instagram. Uh, every Tuesday here, doing reviews with Wolfie over on the audio side as well. And I'm um, also part of Black and White Fright and Secret Underground Hideout, all of which are on the Dorkening Podcast Network. And also go to T Public and just do a search for Wicked Horror Show and support yeah. some uh, horror nerds that uh, do this for nothing. So, so Tony, yeah. Model the shirt. Oh, that's the well, one. This, that's one of this them. This one, this is an older version. Is, is this one on? It there? is. Yep. All right. Well, this is one that, you know, I've had for a while that I. Uh, should wear more often to kind of help promote. But. Thanks for the support, Tone. I appreciate it. You son mm -hmm. of a bitch. But um, so yeah, so go go check that out. And uh, yeah, we're we're uh, you know, <laughs> we're trucking along. So uh, thanks for listening, everyone. And uh, thanks for coming on, guys. And uh, we will see you guys all later. Goodbye. Bye.